So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi, villains, and welcome to For the Love of Pomegranate Podcast. Just wanted to come on, and the reason I wanted to come on is because we were tentatively linked with somebody in the Daily Mail, I think it was yesterday, and then subsequently in the Birmingham Mail. And it's not because I think that this, po- that this transfer is going to go through, but I think that it's a really interesting player that I wanted to take a look at because he's somebody that is... I've spoken to two people online recently, and this guy's name came up twice um, with regards to players to look out for within the championship. And it was just really interesting. I'm not going to say that there's no smoke without fire. I don't know if there's any <clears throat> validity with regards to whether um, this player, whether Jacob Greaves from Hull City is going to be linked to Aston Villa or is going to come to Aston Villa. But I wanted to do a little bit of a uh, podcast on him just to take a look at what he offers because um, and I'd lo- he's one of these players I'd love to be able to play a video of in here to show you how he plays the game, what he does, how aggressive he is in the tackle because when I start to talk about him here, I'm going to feel like I am just throwing out platitudes and I'm throwing out um, almost stereotypical pieces about him. Um, not about him in particular, but about defenders, British, English defenders in general. So I want to get that caveat out, out, out straight away. Go have a look at him and see if you agree with what I'm going to say, because I genuinely don't have any other way to summarize this player other than the way I'm going to do it, because this is how I feel he plays the game of football. Um but Jacob Greaves, he's 20, 21 years of age, going at 22 years of age. Um, uh, he's actually just got, yeah, he's, he's going at 22 years of age. Hull City uh, defender, plays centre half or plays at left back. So he's played 128 games as a central defender and um, played some time on loan at Cheltenham. And he's also uh, now been a mainstay in the Hull City team. Um, can also play it left back. We're going to take a look in a moment, and I'm going to show you his heat map. And his heat map is is rather brilliant. And the reason I say that is because for a left sided central defender, he really covers to the sideline as well. And um, that's an interesting piece that I'm going to speak about as well because why I think he could be um, uh, somebody that is uh, on a top team's uh, radar over the course of the next few months. But, um, as yeah, as I say, he's played 128 games as, as a centre-half. He's played 19 games as a, as a left-back. Has been previously linked with the likes of Newcastle. Arsenal have been linked with him. Um, West Ham have been linked with him. Sorry, not Arsenal, sorry. Newcastle, West Ham, Forest uh, uh, have been linked with him. And he's... <sighs> And I can see the reason why, because he's got a lot of very, very good qualities. Um, I'm reluctant to, once again, as you know, I'm always reluctant to make comparisons. But when I look at somebody like a Jacob Reeves, when I look at him playing for Hull City, he kind of reminds me a small a bit of a Jonathan Woodgate before the injuries. I'm going to say Jonathan Woodgate even before Real Madrid. Uh, so it leads Jonathan Woodgate back in the day. And it's not just because he's got fantastic hair. He's a rather good looking chap and he puts his hair back in an analyst band, which we will look at in a moment. They are not just the similarities that I see in him. He's a big, tough, strong defender. He's six foot one. He's pretty agile. He's calm in possession. And But at the same time, if he needs to go full on McCarthy on it and blast it up the field, he's going to do that too as well. Very, very capable left foot. In fact, almost too capable of a left foot. So much so that, that I'd say I probably... Um, I'd love if there was a statistic. I'd love if I could find a statistic that would show me how many passes he's ever made with his right, right foot. Um, because he is very, very left foot dominant, which is fine. I don't need my centre halves to be two footed. It'd be nice, but I don't need them to be two footed. Uh, but he's very, very dominant in left foot. Uh, with it, with his left foot as well, uh, or with his left foot, should I say, as opposed to his right foot. Um, 
one of the biggest things that I've seen with him is is that, and sometimes it can be seen as a negative for a centre half that they go to ground very earlier, they go to ground very often. But his timing of his challenge is really, really good. Watch him, watch it, and I mean, even if you go on YouTube and you watch the watch a clip of a defender, you're going to see about fifty to sixty tackles. Try and watch a game, a full game of his if you can, and you'll see what he does. Because because when I, if you watch any of those videos, those compilations of a defender, you're going to think they go to ground an awful lot. Watch watch a full game of his, even if you watch it on on uh, two or three times the speed. <coughs> He's super calm in, 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 in possession. He's very, very good at covering the ground. And when he needs to go, when he needs to go to ground, he does. So like he's very adept at a uh, at, at sliding tackle. Um, but it's not his MO. Uh, as I say, he's he's got that old style British defender um feel about him. And uh, and you can see that he throws his body in front of the ball, he gets uh, he gets blocks in, he gets um he, he, he tackles, as I mentioned before, and uh, he backs himself to be able to use his body and to be able to use his uh, his considerable frame. As I say, for six foot one, he looks an awful lot taller on the field than six foot one. He's got this brilliant ability, and you know that he's played at left back as well, because he's got this brilliant ability as a center half to be able to drift in front of. So when he's running side by side with a player and he's got decent pace for sure, he's very, got very decent pace. And when he's running side by side with a player, he's got this brilliant ability to be able to drift across their 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 um their their trajectory or their run path and use his body to shepherd the ball. <clears throat> it's a dying art. It's a dying art in defenders, specifically in defenders in the Premier League. You don't see that as much anymore. Where they can they do it, but they can't use their body. And you, how many times do you see uh, a, maybe a smaller striker or a smaller? Uh, winger or something like that uh be able to get in around them because they don't they, they can get in front of the player all right but they don't know how to make themselves big and difficult to get around <clears throat> you can see jacob reeves does that albeit at the championship level you can see that he does it and it's an interesting it, it's it's interesting to see it, it because it's making a a return a, a proper return back to to um to football again, that you need to be able to do that, and you don't need to be able to to be that all encompassing ball playing centre half. That when you get in front of a player, you put your foot in it, you turn that turn that striker, and next thing, all of a sudden, you stroke a beautiful forty yard cross field pass to your own winger, and you create an instant, immediate uh, counter attack. There's very few players they they can do that, and you need to be able to do the bread and butter. And that's what I'm trying to say here with a Jacob Greaves. For somebody so young, he does the bread and butter very well. He does it, and like specifically when the ball is on the ground, and when the ball is in the air as well, he copes pretty well as well with 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 uh, with headers with any aerial challenges as well. He's still learning his craft, absolutely is still learning his craft, but the building blocks that he has and the amount of time that he's played unknown at Cheltenham and with Hull at such a young age, I think has been vital for him at the moment. There was talks he was going to leave at the start of this season. I even think you know the last six months that he's played there. Looking at him statistically, you can see that he's he's backed himself and he's become a bigger player, a, a, a more um, a more rounded player, I suppose. Really, just looking statistically, and also that he's become a more important player for Hull City as well over that period of time. Um, so let's take a little look uh, at at Jacob uh, Greaves. So there's the, that's what I kind of mean by the the Jonathan would get. I don't want you to think just because the Alice Band and the hair slick back that there's a that. Uh, that's the only reason that I'm I'm likening him to Jonathan Woodgate. I think he look he plays like him as well, um, uh, slightly he plays with him. I think I suppose with regards to the physicality he brings, the tackling that he brings, and 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 his his defensive positioning as well is is quite like John, uh, Jonathan Woodgate. Now I wanted to take a look at him in the two different positions. Obviously, as a centre half, which we're going to look at here, and then we're going to look at him as a left back as well. But I want to draw your attention to something here. I want to draw your attention specifically to his heat map. Now look at the amount of ground he covers. That's a serious amount of ground that he covers uh, for being a left center half. So what I mean by this is he's able to get out onto the sideline. He's able to, you know, he's got the pace. He's got the anticipation. He's got the positioning to be able to get out to the sideline, get back into that central central position as well. And the reason that that sparked my interest with him was Una Emery, obviously, when he plays with, with six at the back, that's fine. He needs, he needs somebody who's able to keep his uh, composure and stay in the middle of the field. But when we have played a, uh, at home at times this season, 
and this isn't a slight on Tyrone Mings because I, I think that Mings is actually really good at this as well. But getting out to the sideline for somebody like an Ezri Kanza has been a bit difficult. And I know both Mings and, and Jacob Greaves are uh, left-sided players. But it's just interesting that uh, when you see a heat map like this, the amount of ability it gives to be able to cover in behind left backs. Now, we've also discussed that uh, both of our left backs are extremely attacking at the moment. Uh, Luca Dean, uh, Alex Moreno, we're going to look at those in a moment. And we're going to look and see what they, um, what maybe where uh, a left sided centre half like this. And, and once again, I know people are going to be screaming at the screen going, well, that would make Diego Carlos Mings, Jacob Greaves as our, left, uh, as our centre halves, and they're all left footed. And that is correct. And I that's and I don't know how you fix that. I don't. I'm not a massive proponent of having a right-footed centre half and a left-footed centre half. I think that um, you know that that's the ideal situation, obviously, for clearing the ball easier and from a natural point of view. But one of those three centre halves has to be able to use the right foot as well. If that is the situation that we're going to explore, also. You've got Ezri Kanza there, who I'm not discounting. I don't think he's going anywhere, and I think he will definitely be a part of the centre-back rotation um, uh, next year specifically. So looking at some, of his, um, at some of his statistics there, when we look at these tackles per 90, he puts in a serious amount of tackles right up there, you know, like dwarfing any of the players that we have here, albeit, as I've mentioned before, Callum Chambers has a small sample set, so his, his numbers are a bit skewed. We look at his interceptions per 90. He's up there with Tyrone Mings, who's in the pink. We look at his ball recoveries. He's far outweighs Tyrone Mings and Ezri Kanza. And yes, that does take into account that he would have played left back uh, at times as well. So that would have uh, a bearing on that. Ariel Jules, I mentioned, he's pretty good at them. Puts him right up there with Tyrone Mings. Just behind Tyrone Mings from an aerial battle point of view. And we can see the disparity between how many aerial jewels he wins and Ezri Kanza wins there. Ezri Kanza is in the white on this uh, graph. Uh, blocks, once again, gets his blocks in there. As I said, this guy is your typical uh, British defender. And I completely understand that people are probably going to be looking at the screen going, well, maybe he won't be able to get all that, that those blocks in or when the game gets a small bit faster when he moves to the Premier League, these numbers will diminish. I fully expect that, that that will happen. And if it doesn't, well, then we've got an absolute rock star on our hands if he does join Aston Villa. Because when we look at his progressive passes and, and when we look at uh, his pass attempts, he comes in, and, his pass attempts come in around the same as Tyrone Mings, but the amount of times he plays the ball forward and progresses the ball forward far outweighs anybody else in the team. So that's exciting. Now, his passing percentage isn't great at 74.3%, but still, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's up there. You know, it's, um, it, that's something that we can work on. Uh, your, your passing percentage can be worked on because mm -hmm. the progressive passes there are really important for me as well. Moving the ball out from defense. So you can look at, look at a ball playing defender in two ways. You can look at them as what is their pass percentage, and they might only pass the ball three yards forward to their number six. Or... You can look at a ball playing defender about successful progressive passes played. So that's something that I would favor a small bit more. And I don't have that number for Jacob Greaves, but it's interesting and I'm looking at it and I would be interested to know what that number is for him. So that's how he, ta how he tallies up as a center half. Now, if we were to look at him with regards to our left backs as well, when he's played in uh, like over like this season as well, when he's played as a left back, these are the numbers he's put up. Tackles are the same. Up there with, with Alex Moreno. Uh, recoveries, interceptions, all very similar to our left backs at the moment. Crossing. <clears throat> One of the big things that Luca Dean did was cross an awful lot of balls. Being in a lower league and having and being a left back, Jacob Greaves has been tasked with crossing the ball an awful lot more. Now, he doesn't make very many shot-creating actions. So that's a bit of a... Um, I'm not quite sure how that works there with regards to... Uh, with, with, with regards to the amount of shot creating actions in comparison to the amount of crosses that he makes there. Um, I don't know. And I would like to look into that statistic a small a bit more um, because I don't see, obviously I don't see him make that many, uh, many shot creating actions because he's played as center half an awful lot. Maybe that's where the skew is with regards to this one. Also progressive passes. He helped, he helped uh, progressive passes, but uh, Alex Moreno and Luca Dean. Uh, pass percentage, he's up there with Alex Moreno. Uh, his pass attempts are lower than the two gentlemen previously, but we can see he stacks up comparably to the to our left backs. And when we go back here, we can say say here that because statistically and also based on the fact that he's playing in a league below, he stacks up 
uh, statistically fairly well with regards to our current centre halves. So I just wanted to take a look at him because I do think that the that the uh, defence is going to be an area where there's going to be a bit of uh, ironing out to be done over the, the transfer window. I've been very vocal on that. I've said that before the last transfer window. I said that I thought that there would be open heart surgery, I think was the word I actually used for this defence. Because of the age profile of the defence as well, I do think there's going to be younger uh, recruits brought in. And uh, potentially, and I don't... I couldn't tell you whether he's going to sign or not. Jacob Greaves could be somebody that they look to if they are going to be scouting within uh, within Britain, within England, and you would be mad not to because there's some really, really good young players in the Championship that are making their way forward at the moment. So that's going to do it for this, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. That's Jacob Greaves from Hull City. I don't know whether he's going to sign for Aston Villa, but it was interesting when I saw him because two other people had mentioned about his prowess to me recently. So I wanted to take a little look for myself. So if you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the podcast. And uh, we will be back with more podcasts over the course of the next few days. So until then, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is up the villa. <music>